Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to the video. This is another one of those topics uh, that I keep meaning to get to, and I've mentioned it a number of times now in videos, and it always just seems to get shelved, and something comes up. In this case, it was an event that happened in one of my aquariums here in the shop, and I managed to record it, and it is a perfect example of part of what I want to talk about today. And it is rather tongue-in-cheek called uh, plant warfare. But what do you do when you are either rooted in place or have no mobility of your own, you're just at the whim of currents, to outcompete your neighbors? Now I'm going to strictly keep to aquatic things here, and I am also going to talk mostly about plants, but I am also going to talk about how this can influence your fish, because it is definitely something that is something you need to keep an eye on. So this planter here is a perfect example of what I call the more benign approach to uh, plants trying to outcompete their uh, neighbors. And that is simply by growing more and getting more of the sunlight and occupying more of the territory so that uh, they gradually uh, force out, because of lack of light or lack of nutrient, anything that's nearby. And a lot of plants do this, especially in aquariums, a lot of the fast-growing ones. If you have Elodea or Hornwort or my favorite nemesis, uh, Duckweed, these are perfect examples of plants that will uh, grow to the point where they will uh, block out a sufficient amount of light that you'll end up with issues uh, for plants that are below, like uh, Anubias or Pearlweed or any of these others here. And that is the problem, because when you do outcompete something like that, and they do get choked out, you end up with uh, toxins released. Um, and also, just in the case of uh, you know a more benign plant, just nutrients being released. And if you end up with enough of that choked out in an aquarium, uh, you'll end up with pockets that will produce uh, not the best of gases, and you can end up with uh, a fish die off. Or if nothing else, just having those fish uh, crowded to the point where they're not getting the best environment and the filter can't do its job because it can't really uh, get current through those areas. And if you happen to end up disturbing one of them by either maintenance or something else, or in the case of you know uh, this, you end up pruning them back, you can end up causing a lot of that stuff to become exposed to your fish and you could end up with die-offs. I mean, how many people out there have had problems with a tank after doing a big prune on a plant that you know is you know growing too much? And that is the first of what I want to cover here today, but plants do an awful lot more than just that. The most notable of these is the fact that plants are amazing chemical factories. From a human point of view, it's given us a large number of pharmaceuticals and pretty much every spice you've ever put on your food. Now, obviously, the plant doesn't uh, produce these for our benefit. It is producing them for uh, one of two main categories. Now, the first category I'm not really going to cover too much because it doesn't really have too much of an impact on aquariums. But the second one definitely does, and I'm going to cover that a little bit more in detail. Now, the first group I'm going <laughs> to tongue-in-cheek again, I suppose, call it the group of chemicals of please don't eat me. They produce chemicals that do one of two things. Uh, first off, either inhibit uh, the appetite of whatever's trying to eat them, or just out and out kill them. And most of those are uh, aimed at insects, uh, but they do uh, wash over into other, pl uh, other animals as well. Now, every spice that you've ever put on your food fits into those categories, either as an appetite suppressant or as a poison, but obviously they are mostly designed for insects. So... They do affect our metabolism, and some people can't really digest them that well, but it's, like I said, it's mostly aimed at uh, invertebrates. Now, the other group of chemicals I really want to cover uh, comes up because of this. This aquarium here is the one I've been uh, setting aside for the ammonia tests I'm going to be doing. So what I did is I just pulled out all the plants, I left the filter there, and pulled out all the fish, and then it is small water change, and I just let it sit. And then I was setting up another experiment, which I haven't mentioned yet, so I won't mention it here, but I had to pull some plants out of a tank, so I pulled out some hornwort, and I put the hornwort in here, and a little bit of duckweed that got in there as a consequence. Now, because I took everything out of here, this plant here is a type of algae, 
and it is producing a toxin. And that toxin is uh, not very healthy for other plants. And I honestly didn't even think of it at the time because there was only a small amount of it initially. But as you can see, it's starting to cover the glass more. And if I left this alone, it would definitely cover a lot more of it. Now, I know this may not look like an awful lot of algae, and in mass it probably isn't, but it is producing more than enough chemicals to alter the biochemistry of this small tank. So I put the hornwort in and a little bit of duckweed, and I noticed a couple days later that it had all died back, in the sense that the needles were all falling off, and more importantly, the duckweed was dying back, and I don't think that has ever happened ever before. And I've kept hornwort for quite some time now, and I have it in a great many tanks. Periodically, I'll have a fish uh, that will take, you know, a, a lunch on it, that sort of thing. But I've never actually had hornwort die on its own. I mean, my tanks are quite healthy, and this tank here had been set up for quite some time. And the fish that were in it uh, never had any issues. Uh, the filter obviously works fine. The plants are all growing. And the only reason why I pulled all this out, it was in the perfect spot for that experiment. So I figured I'd just do that. I did notice that there was a few spots in the glass. And I think uh, in an earlier video, I also noticed them as well. But because all the other plants were in there, they were altering the environment for themselves, just like all plants do. And this particular algae uh, just couldn't you know, grow or thrive enough to become a problem. But the second I pulled all those plants out, uh, they stopped producing their chemicals and this thing was allowed to take off. And because this is sat empty now for, I think, about a week and a half, two weeks, uh, it had the chance to uh, multiply and, again, alter the environment for itself. So once I put the hardwood in there, I guess it just didn't really have a chance. Again, it's not the kind of thing that I run across very often. That's why I recorded it. And I know there's uh, going to be a number of people who are going to mention that there are a number of other possibilities. But keep in mind two things. First off, uh, this plant, this tank grew hornwort quite well, and uh, all my systems are <laughs> set up so that they grow hornwort quite well. But more importantly, I've never had a dieback of duckweed, and that is probably the most important part of this. And the only thing that's changed here, besides a small water change, which is nothing, because I do water changes in all my tanks all the time is the fact that this particular algae is starting to grow nicely. And again, that is the only thing that's changed here. Now, if you have other options or other ideas, definitely let me know below. I'm most interested in any opinions, and uh, obviously I can miss something quite easily. And I know I have not covered everything in this video because it's not really possible, but I really wanted to cover sort of like a plant chemical warfare aspect in the sense that plants will produce these things and then obviously this has an effect on your fish's health in small amounts this algae is not a problem but if there were fish in this tank now i suspect that they would have uh, health issues as well because anything that's going to kill off duckweed is going to definitely have some harmful effects on you know, your fish but again this doesn't really matter too much because this tank is going to get sterilized uh, for the ammonia tests and uh, then that will uh, pretty much get rid of all this and then we'll just reset it up you never can get rid of this sort of thing, but if it's in such a small amount that it won't really matter, especially if there are other plants in there competing with it, uh, it's never an issue. Because I think this particular species of algae is obviously in other tanks because I don't really go through a lot of protocols for isolating tanks uh, from each other in the sense that I don't you know, use separate the cloths for everybody and all that sort of stuff so it is definitely going to be in everywhere but again you can see all the other ones are nice and healthy because all those other plants are creating environments that are better for them now i know i only lightly covered this topic and i know there's a lot more detail involved here but i don't really want to bore you guys too much with this but if there is interest i will see it in the comments below and i will go into more detail in another video so, as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. And the final clip is going to be of the surface here. And it's going to be showing mostly the duckweed and how it is all what is called chlorotic. It has lost its uh, a lot of its green. And as you can see, it's tiny and not doing well at all. It will probably survive because actually I've seen this stuff dry out completely and then come back to life. Uh, but it is, like I said, being really hard done on this. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.